Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hopefully, uh, everybody's having a great day so far. Uh, we've got a few people still coming in, but uh, it's one o'clock, so let's get this started. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about uh, a platform known as DriveWorks. Uh, we like to call it uh, DriveWorks CPQ because it uh, it uh, is part of that genre of of product configurator technology. Um, we um, yeah, we got still more people coming in. So, uh, yeah, these are um, interesting times, and uh, whether whether we're going through these times or normal times, uh, every company has uh, to make investments that uh, will allow them to rapidly respond to quote requests or creating drawings or creating other content to to make them competitive and to gain more business. And uh, one of the tool sets that is an add-on to SolidWorks that my team uh, uh, works with is called DriveWorks. And um, that is going to be the uh, main subject of today's presentation. Uh, I like to call it or refer to it as stop waiting, start automating. And uh, when you take a look at uh, the technology that uh, we're going to present to you today, you'll see how we can, um, what, uh, what that, the sense of that uh, means. So here's a brief agenda. We're going to get into some quick introductions, talk about some customer success stories, uh, describe what CPQ is and how it uh, relates to product configurators and some of the work that, that we do. Uh, we're going to talk about the scalability of the solution, show a couple of demo applications, talk about the benefits, and then uh, uh, and respond to any questions that, um, that uh, you uh, throw at us during the presentation. Now, as you'll see, every image that we present here is gonna be of what we refer to as a configurable product. So that is gonna be kind of the basis of, of the uh, discussion of this technology. So the presenters today, uh, I'm gonna be joined by Jim Peltier, who's one of our specialists on DriveWorks. Uh, he's been with uh, Javelin for eight years and uh, working on the DriveWorks team for, for four years. Uh, I'm going to let him, uh, Jim, do you want to give a 30 second uh, presentation of yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. So as John already mentioned, I've been at Javelin for eight years and half of that time I've spent uh, doing DriveWorks stuff uh, in addition to doing SolidWorks stuff. Uh, but prior to that, um, I spent uh, on further eight years in, uh, in industry designing industrial automation equipment, assembly lines and such. Um, mostly in Cambridge, Ontario, but I also spent two years overseas in Worcestershire, England, doing much the same thing over there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Excellent. That's great. Thanks a lot, Jim. And uh, so my name is John. Uh, I'm uh, the uh, res I'm responsible for uh, sales and account management at Javelin, specifically for CPQ or DriveWorks. Uh, I've been at Javelin for 19 years and uh, worked with uh, probably 600 customers or companies over that time, introducing SolidWorks and uh, for the last few years, uh, DriveWorks. Um, we've got a uh, dedicated team uh, that is focused on nothing but automation, driver, CPQ, and and uh, it is a, a team that, that's got a vast amount of experience. Uh, we've been selling the driver platform since 2006, and it has really transformed to a full CPQ solution. In 2015, we broke out this team. Uh, we have three and a half dedicated driver application engineers. That half is Jim because he spends half his time devoted to DriveWorks, the other half doing SolidWorks training and, uh, and mentoring. So, um, but uh, from time to time, we bring him in to help us out because he's, he's valuable that way and has got great experience. Uh, the team has a lot of experience, uh, both in terms of SolidWorks and DriveWorks. We've got a lot of customers, um, a little over 90, and uh, Javelin is the primary DriveWorks resource for several of those customers. And uh, we like to be very close to our customers. We've got 28 active projects that uh, we we are involved in and engaged in with our customers to help them improve uh, in terms of their skills of DriveWorks or to enhance their DriveWorks projects. Now, one of the things I want to highlight is uh, this image here on the uh, bottom right. That was a, a configure, uh, configurator on Configure My Product. Up until a, a couple of months ago, that's what it looked like. And uh, this is what it looks like today, just to highlight uh, some of the things that you do with the interface uh, of uh, within the technology. So uh, 
Uh, as I said, the platform is called DriveWorks. The company is called DriveWorks. Uh, they have been uh, in the automation game since 2001. They are a SolidWorks certified gold partner, the only uh, automation solution partner that has a subset of their technology in every SolidWorks license. Uh, so if you look at uh, uh, functionality uh, on uh, in SolidWorks on, under your Express tools, you'll find that Drivers Express is included with every license of, of SolidWorks. Uh, many customers around the world and many customers that are on the web and uh, we've got a very close relationship with, with the folks in DriveWorks and uh, they're awesome people to work with. Um, here's a quick uh, customer success story, O'Brien Lifting Solutions. Uh, we've been working with them since uh, around 2009, 2010. Uh, their goal was to upgrade from a quote unquote back of a cigarette package type business. And um, we were their primary resource in building their, their DriveWorks quoting project. They have uh, deployed DriveWorks to help automate their quoting and are now taking steps to automate their CAD. Uh, they reduced their quoting time from three to five days to uh, less than an hour. So when we talk about a quick response, uh, in our experience, we find that customers tell us that speed, speed and accuracy, but a, a, a lot of times speed is, is very important in winning business because if you can respond very quickly with a quotation and a, a simplified sales drawing, uh, it gets you uh, an advantage uh, over your competitors. Uh, they uh, have been focused more on, instead of uh, doing quotes, they're working on increasing the number of dealers to sell their product. So uh, because the, the solution is web-based, they're able to share it with their dealers and uh, help increase uh, sales. Uh, we've worked with them extensively. We're helping them automate their CAD as well. And uh, we've got integrations with their ERP and other databases to make them uh, uh, efficient uh, with, within their business. Now, um, when we talk about drivers, uh, the main term that you hear typically with, within discussions that I have are, um, and the question that I ask is, do you CPQ? And, um, for those of you who are in the SolidWorks community or not, uh, the term CPQ refers to configure price quote, and it's the ability to customize or create a different configuration of a product like these trailers that could be different based on sizes, based on accessories or other options, and uh, the ability to quickly configure, generate a price to manufacture, and then deliver a quotation. Now, with um, with that genre of software, we like we notice that uh, uh, there are different uh, terms or interchangeable terms. So you might hear someone say 3D product configurator or just a standard product configurator, sales configurators. So the, the, there's a number of different ways that uh, people refer to these types of systems, and we we consider them you know highly interchangeable. And uh, we've got a few examples that we're going to show you. Now, when we talk about CPQ, this typically applies to products that are configurable. Um, so if you're designing an injection mold for one part today that looks totally different from another part tomorrow, it's not quite a fit. But if you're designing, for example, material handling equipment that is same as but slightly different from one project to the next, that's where this is more of a fit. So when we're talking about uh, companies who need a configure price quote technology, um, one of the key things is um, uh, the ability to rapidly respond with a quotation or a sales, draw, a sales drawing. So if you're involved in, a, in an opportunity with a potential customer, um, a lot of times they'll ask for a quotation and the ability to del deliver that quickly will determine the success or failure of gaining that business. So that's a pretty important question. We also talk to customers that demand custom products at standard prices. And some of the companies that we work with uh, use that as their defining uh, innovation or their, their, their value statement in, in, in the sense that they'll give you the, uh, a, a product that's customized without adding cost to that product uh, or taking too long to deliver it. So there's a, there's a competitive advantage when you have the ability to quickly quote and quickly generate the drawings needed to manufacture that product. 
Uh, in terms of other things that we see, uh, we see that uh, there's a lot of customers that have a person who's got all the knowledge in their head and being able to quote may not be that easy because you sometimes you might have to ask specific questions because you don't have the knowledge. And uh, so we'd like to take that knowledge, build it into the CPQ system so that it can be leveraged for, for other people around the business. And uh, we also find that there's a lot of companies building their own DriveWorks uh, using uh, tools like Excel or, or other programming capabilities. But once you see what's in uh, DriveWorks, um, you'll see that uh, it is, um, is far more scalable and, and has a lot, of, a lot of functionality. Now, as I mentioned, DriveWorks is scalable. DriveWorks Express is in every license of SOLIDWORKS. It's limited functionality, it just as models and drawings, but for some people that may be uh, sufficient. Um, and uh, as I said, it's free in every license of SOLIDWORKS. If you are serious about looking at the technology, we like to recommend DriveWorks Solo because it has far more functionality, more controls, and uh, the scalability factor is, is facilitated because the technology underneath is a lot closer to the higher functional versions of the software. Um, there is a 30-day free trial that Javelin supports, so if you want to try the software for 30, 30 days, uh, we can uh, help you and work with you and answer any questions that you have. And uh, <clears throat> at this level of software, you could start using company data such as pricing or customer lists or th those types of details so you can automate uh, the creation of uh, things like quotes or drawings or bills and materials. So there's a lot, there's a lot more functionality that you gain in Solo. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jim to show a quick presentation of the conveyor. So Jim, let me... Uh, Pass it over to you. Okay. And there you go. We'll go to this screen. Okay. So you should be able to see my screen. And what yep, I'm going to do is. is I'm just going to run my DriveWorks project. So I've created a, a or I guess I I didn't create it. I can't take credit for it. Um, but I have a project here that creates a conveyor system. So it's going to take you it's going to take less time to show you than it is to explain it so i'll just click run up here and what i can do is i can say i'm an existing customer and i can choose from a list of existing uh existing customers in here or i can say i'm a new customer and i can fill in my data and that information can be written to uh written to custom properties or what have you so i'll just throw some things in there and i'll click next uh next up what i want to do is i want to define how many straight or how many, sorry, how many sections of my conveyor I have. So I can have, in this project, I can have as few as one, or I can have as many as five. Um, if I were, this was, this is DriveWorks Solo. If I were using DriveWorks Pro, then I could have as many as I like. So we'll just go with three. We'll keep it nice and simple. Uh, come on, go back down to three. So my, my first section is automatically gonna be a straight conveyor because of the way this was set up, but it's asking me about the second section. So my second section is gonna be curved. So I'll click, oh, what happened in the rest of that? Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm, uh, I'm sharing my screen here. Uh, just bear with me a moment. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, okay. So let's present again. Where did that thing go? There we go. Okay. so. Got three, so I'm going to click on next here in order to go to the next step. So my second conveyor option is going to be curved. Then I'm going to click next. And I'm going to say, okay, so my first conveyor section is going to be, um, let's make it a long section. Let's make it three meters long because that's the maximum allowable, as you'll see over here on the right. The width, I'm going to make this as narrow as possible. So I'm going to put one. But you'll notice it because I have a minimum, I my design has a minimum of 400. It won't it won't let me go select a, a value that's below 400. For height, I'm going to be kind of mean, and I'll make it a really tall one. I'll make it two meters tall. But again, there's a maximum of 1,200, so I won't be able to have it so high that not everybody can reach it. I can choose between light, medium, and heavy duty. So I have I can I have the these different kinds of controls that I can choose. Um, maybe the side rails on it, I have them regular height, or I can have them elevated so they're at a at a higher height. Um, so this was my first conveyor section. When I click next, 
This goes on to the second section, which as you'll recall, I said was gonna be a curve. So it's a curve. I can choose the radius of it, again, with minimum and maximum values. I'll just leave it at 600. I can choose my angle anywhere between 30, or 30 and 90. So let's go 60. <clears throat> um, but I can't control the width or the height or the duty. All of this is getting its information from the first section. Obviously, I don't want my different sections of conveyors to be at different heights um, or to be different widths for that matter. That could cause that could cause problems. So it's safeguarded me against against that. I'll click next. And then for my third conveyor section, I'm just going to make it a short section to contrast it with the long section that's at the beginning. When I'm done, I pick next. And I have this option here for intelligent file naming. Right now you'll see my all of my parts listed here. So I have a left-hand rail, I have a right-hand rail, I have a medium-duty rail, I have a frame, I have support. And they're all followed up with this 005. What that 005 means is that this is the fifth time that I've run a conveyor system. So this way, what it does is it makes sure that um, for this conveyor, I have, I have uh, the appropriate, a unique file name. However, sometimes you may not necessarily want that. I'm gonna use the checkbox and say use intelligent file naming. And what you'll see is that now my left-hand rail is based on the length and the height. Because it, what this will do is this will ensure that I have, um, <clears throat> that I can create a unique part. Um, but let's say I were to run another, another project with the exact same, exact same values keyed in. I can save myself from having to generate this file a second time by saying use intelligent file naming and building my file name rules a little bit differently. So we'll use, eh, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it fairly basic for now. I'll click next, <clears throat> just because I do want to, I do want to show you the generation of the stuff. This one just, this section just allows me to get more information about um, different elements of my project. But I'm just going to click next and I'll click finish. And this is going to generate my models. So I'm going to save my models with the with the final final names. We're also going to generate drawings, um, any documents that we that we're also generating. Um, I'm going to export any kind of form data. And there's also this open results and folder when done. I'm going to turn that, I'm going to keep all of them on and I'll click finish. <clears throat> and now I go and I get myself a a oh, nice warm beverage while my computer does its work, does my work for me. So we'll give it a few minutes. So what you see on the bottom right-hand corner is the, the data that uh, Jim used to define all those components are being pushed into a master model uh, of SolidWorks. And uh, the system is automatically creating all the, the models, the drawings, the bombs, the quotation, and everything else that's built into this uh, project. So uh, as Jim said, um, uh, in a couple of moments, uh, all that uh, content will be uh, created and you'll be able to see uh, some of the details. You can see some of the drawings coming up now. Now with, uh, as we mentioned, like you can start uh, entering customer company data like customer lists and um, you can have parts data. So you can, you can create a costed bill of material and then ultimately you can do a quotation. And uh, so, um, you know, within a few moments, uh, all this uh, documentation has been created uh, by Dropworks. Okay, so it's finished. Um, I'm opening up some of the files. This was the quote that uh, that John was talking about. So you can see, I've got my three conveyor sections on here. It's calculating the price based on the height and width and length, um, and it's giving me a total total price for the system. If I take a look. Um, Let's go back. I look under, um, say, my SolidWorks files, and I look under drawings. I have all my drawings here, so I can also go into SolidWorks and I can um, uh, I can go to recent documents and open up the uh, one of the previous documents. So now I can see a a drawing of 
this section of the conveyor or a top level uh, section of my conveyor or anything like that. So it does it and it gives me all the information I need. I've got my bill of materials up there. It's the same as a solid it, it's a SolidWorks bill of materials. I can populate my custom properties with um, with whatever I like. So you can see this one's been populated with what the height, the width, and the length are for my uh, for my part numbers and my part numbers so as one well. So are all the in the custom pro in properties. Sorry, go ahead, John. Yeah, yeah. One thing you can, uh, if you can uh, zoom out, uh, one of the things that we like to make sure that people understand is that uh, for these drawings, they may need a little bit of touch up. So if you see. The, uh, on the drawing, uh, the, the text there has gone outside of the box and there are some, uh, some annotations or balloons that may have to be relocated. But uh, you know, for, for not having done uh, or used any energy to create these drawings uh, to go from you know, possibly an hour, or an hour and a half's worth of work down to a couple of minutes, um, you know, it's a small price to pay to do some minor modifications to have a complete set of drawings. So again, and if, it, uh, it goes. In Go fact, ahead, I Jim. could have I could have set this this note up um, if I had built this project. Um, I could have set this note up so that it was it was a multi line note, so that wouldn't that wouldn't be going off the end like that. But things like say this 600, it was there. I manually moved it here. So to drag and drop, you know, a dimension or two isn't isn't a time consuming process. Um, but you'll notice yeah. that I don't have a dimension that's say there, um, cause I can locate them relative to the footprint of the drawing view. Yeah, and part of the part of the point too is that, you know, there are, there is, there are techniques, there are things you could do to get close to 100% accuracy on these drawings. But sometimes you, you reach a point of diminishing returns and uh, for you know a minute or so to clean up, it's not a, a big price to pay if, if you've saved an hour and a half or two hours uh, to create uh, this project. So um, yeah, so that that is the uh, solo version of the conveyor project. Uh, was there anything else you want to say, Jim? Um, no, that's uh, that's as easy as it is. You just key in the numbers and click go. Okay, so yeah, so a lot of our customers are using Driver Solo. We like Driver Solo a lot, and we we recommend people use it if you're if you're serious about automating your projects. There's a 30-day free trial, and we provide mentoring support, so you can ask us questions as you as you go through in building a project. Uh, with the software, you've got uh, video-based training, so you can teach yourself. There's all kinds of videos on on YouTube, and uh, it is is the best place to start if you want to take a look at uh, automating some of your design uh, tasks. All right, back to okay. you, back so, to you, John. Uh, yeah. Um, we got something, we got a question. Can you lock the view sizing so when it's scaled, it won't go outside the sheet? Yes, absolutely. You, there's, there's rules you can set up for, um, you can do it in one of two ways. Uh, if you have Driver uh, Pro, they have a thing called generation tasks. And you can set what the uh, what the maximum positions available for the footprint are. Um, otherwise, what you would do is you'd capture, um, say, the the view scale or the drawing scale, the sheet scale, and you'd build you can build rules to um, uh, to essentially drive what the what the drawing scale is. So if I had, um, uh, let's say, my conveyor length was over a certain value. I can say if the conveyor length is over a certain value, you use a, a 1 to 20 scale, otherwise use a 1 to 10 scale. Okay, great. So I just got my view. Okay, let me... Uh... Okay, thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks for answering uh, that question and uh, the welcome. presentation. So. Uh, that was a quick uh, a preview of the Driver Solo functionality, and uh, it uh, talks about the scalability of the software. If you want, if you started at at uh, Driver Express, you can upgrade to Solo. But um, this is uh, this is a good place to start, and it's great to, to upscale because you you can get into uh, the next level of uh, Driver which is Driver Professional. Um, the the scalability is very easy when you go from uh, solo to pro because 
the rule builder, for example, is uh, the exact same technology, and it's easy to to migrate up to the pro level. You've got you got even more controls at the pro level. You can start using or integrating the applications with other business systems like ERP um, or CRM, like Salesforce, those types of systems. Um, so whereas we use data tables uh, that could be you know old or or, or, or static, um, with the Driverx Professional you can create live links, so you can reach into uh, any of these systems and uh, take data that's live, so you got more current pricing. And uh, with Pro, you've got options to deploy on the web. You don't necessarily have to. You could still keep DriveWorks on the desktop for people that have SolidWorks or people who don't, like inside salespeople. So there, there are options to um, enable people other than the people that have DriveWorks uh, to start using the interface and generating different designs and um, quotes and uh, uh, other type of content. So let's get into, so let's, uh, so we showed you the driver solo uh, application. So let's show you that same uh, application in the professional version. So uh, I wanted to uh, show people this website, the Driverx Live website. It is uh, amazing uh, to be on here because you can um, look at a number of different uh, configurators that they've built. And uh, this particular one, it's taking a little time to load up, but uh, it, it shows how you can embed a, a configurator right inside of a, a website so that if you wanted to um, have this Functional, functionality or show it to your customers, you can do things like this and just show it uh, right inside of, uh, of your browser, uh, embed it onto your website, and um, you've got an application right here that, uh, that gives people the ability to reconfigure some of your products and, and uh, see it in a highly graphical uh, fashion. So. Uh, for this example, or before I show the example, I just want to show you that there are uh, a whole host of different types of applications. I know that there are a lot of people that are on this uh, webinar, uh, in a lot of different industries, and I think if you if you look through some of these, uh, you'll see that uh, there are applications close to what you do. Um, this is the covered example I showed you the image of. But the one I'm going to work with right now is the uh, conveyor example. Uh, as Jim showed you, that application is, runs inside of SolidWorks because Driver Solo only runs inside of SolidWorks. But when you reach the professional level of the software, you have the ability, you have the option to deploy your configurator onto the internet so that a customer or a dealer or an inside sales rep could uh, access via a browser. So here is an example of that conveyor in the professional version deployed on the web. Um, I've got the ability to uh, make some design changes. Again, I'm just on a browser. I got no special software. And uh, I've made a, a simple change. Now, with any one of these changes, with any one of these features obviously there are rules and uh, so with Jim he showed you've got minimum and maximum values and uh, you also can control uh, by by formulas by calculations so that uh, if somebody designs something it's not just going to lengthen or shorten or you know change itself it's going to do so on the basis of formulas and calculations that you've that you've built into this model so that you cannot specify something that can't be built. So it's, it's uh, that you, you are leveraging knowledge and, and uh, any simulation type work that you've gone in developing this product and uh, it's gonna do the, the job that uh, it, it, it's intended to do. So I'm just uh, randomly picking different uh, things to do. So 
A uh, couple of highlights on this uh, web page is you'll see that it's different than the one that was shown inside of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, anytime I make a change, I, I see not just the graphics update, but on the bottom right here, I'll see that the cost changes. So it, uh, there's a lot of uh, things that you can do. That cost changes because I'm connected to a, a database behind the scenes. And if I make a change to the model, I can calculate, recalculate what the, what the cost is. And then uh, however I want to do it, I can have either a markup or go on a price book and, and show a new cost. So now you've got the ability to show anything you want on your interface, whether it's web-based or, or deployed internally. You can show the cost, you can not show the cost, it's totally up to you. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna start creating a different, um, a different assembly. I'm gonna add a different section and uh, slide that out of the way okay so if i choose to i can add another section just the way jim did <clears throat> but instead of typing the the data in i can be more interactive i can uh, adjust what the angle is and then graphically see what uh, what happens uh as you as you watch you see on the bottom right hand the price is, is updating so you're getting the graphical feedback that uh, that you need uh, let's say now i want to go back and and uh, add my rails i can i can do that i can click on that button on the side rails and and it will show up it'll adjust the price you know just the way I wanted it to and uh, actually let me add another section so uh, on the top right on the number of sections I hit the plus button I'm able to add another straight left hand or right hand I'll just make it a, a straight just to keep it simple and uh, let me shorten that a little bit see how it's shortened now I can go back and click on number one and I'll be able to make uh, more edits on uh, that and, and just uh, change it. Let me change the height on that, right? Change it at the beginning, it'll change it throughout, right? So, um, you know, let's say, let's say this is what I want, all right? So I've got a price, I've got the design, I can see what it looks like and um, you know, there's there's other things I can do to this, but for the sake of speed, let's uh, just move forward. Um, now, one of the things about these websites on the Drawbricks Live website is um, to see the full impact of what you what you have just designed. You can click on the finish button and uh, enter your name. I'm gonna enter my name and enter the company name, Javelin. So if you go to these websites, you can do exactly what I'm doing here. Type in Javelin as the reseller. And this application is gonna generate all this content, all the parts assemblies, parts and assemblies, the drawings in PDF, a cover letter, bomb, and a quotation. So when I hit the submit button, all the information that was used to, to specify this design is getting, just like in the driver solo um, example, it's, it's going to get pushed into a set of master models. In this case, uh, it's going to be based. It's based in the UK, and it's going to redesign all those components, assemblies, subassemblies, and create all the content that this project was built to do. So all the conveyor sections, the rollers, the frames, uh, anything and everything that was used to define that assembly is now going to be created automatically so there's so i'm not pressing any buttons i'm not running solidworks there is nobody uh on the planet that's creating these drawings they're all being done by the autopilot module of driveworks so as you'll see um as they be as they're created they're sliding across the stream uh, that that's done done for demo purposes just to show the just to show you the idea that all this content and um now, that being said, uh, this is for demo purposes, but with this technology, I can, for example, generate all the drawings and send them, in, send them to engineering, or I can create a, a sales drawing and a quotation and email them right to the sales guy or right to the customer. So when we talk about a quick response, um, rather than waiting an hour, two hours, two days to get my quotation or a simplified drawing, I can, within my design 
uh, design um, process, I can generate that like literally within minutes. So this is this is all being done in real time, and uh, so within a few moments, I'll have a a quotation and a simplified sales drawing to be able to uh, present to a customer. Um, yeah, so when we talk about um, speed, we also want to talk about accuracy and uh, our experience during the build of these projects is that you get to go in and take a look at your, your quoting systems and your pricing systems, pricing models, and uh, if there are mistakes in them, DriveWorks won't fix them, but by going through the process of build these, building these configurators, uh, you have the opportunity, opportunity to go back go into them, update them, do the refresh, make sure the data is, is uh, solid. Because uh, in our experience, we've seen customers that have won a lot of business, but they have not been profitable and um, vice versa. They've, they've not been successful at winning a lot of business. And, um, and that's because their, their pricing was just so off that they were, that they were um, you know, not uh, covering the costs of associated with with doing the business so uh, with driveworks you have the the ability when you're building these systems to take a look at, at the, the way you're running your business and, and make sure everything's all connected and, and all accurate and uh, so that that's a quick uh, presentation of, uh, of driveworks um, this is an example of the of a web enabled driveworks pro project uh, which is an upgrade from the uh, solo project that we talked about. So, um, again, when we talk about speed and accuracy, uh, these are the tools that uh, Javelin is is uh, helping our customers implement. Now, as a sign of the times, um, saw this on LinkedIn. It is a uh, an actual configurator of a company uh, in Europe, and I thought it was uh, kind of applicable to the times because when I grow grocery. When I go grocery shopping once a week, I see that they've put guards uh, to protect some of the cashiers and other people at the grocery store. And uh, you're going to start seeing more and more of this at the doctor's office or, or other businesses. So um, I really like this because, again, it shows another example of, of how you can put this tool in the hands of a, of a dealer or a sales rep or, or a customer and have them configure their own design for what they need, right? So I can do things like uh, opening up a slot. So if somebody has to pass money or uh, credit cards or, or other um, things uh, to the person that you're transacting with, you've got the ability to open up a window or not, turn that off. And uh, you can uh, you know, do things like adjust the height of, uh, of these. So you can also choose to put uh, tape on the bottom so that it uh, gets affixed to the surface that it sits on. And if I click here, uh, I'll get a quote request. So again, sign of the times, uh, some, some of the things that, uh, that uh, these, uh, these businesses are using to uh, enable customers who need to rapidly create these guard systems. Uh, you, can, you can specify them and then with a couple of clicks, start generating uh, different designs, all the, all the designs, the drawings to manufacture, plus the quotes within which you can, you can say, okay, this is, uh, this is what it costs and enter your credit card here. Now, the one thing about DriveWorks is that, uh, didn't mention it, but uh, let me go back to, to DriveWorks Live. Here's all the documents, it's still uh, producing them. There's quite a big drawing set. Again, uh, zero effort by, by myself as a designer to generate all this content. But one of the things that that uh, we um, take pride in is the ability to leverage these websites so that someone can buckle them to like an e-commerce solution. So if, if I'm designing these, these guards, I can set up a shopping cart and I can accept this design, specify the quantity, create new ones, and uh, thereby uh, facilitate a uh, uh, a, uh, a web-based uh, e-commerce uh, type uh, situation. So yep, here's more drawings. 
So just th these are a couple of options that you have with uh, DriveWorks. Uh, again, you don't have to deploy them on the web, but a lot of our customers are going in that direction because they do business all across either North America or across the globe. And um, when you have the ability to configure, generate a quote, and generate all the documentation to needed to, um, to transact that business, uh, you, you're speeding up your organization. And um, although probably not a, a big task to modify that conveyor in DriveWorks, the whole idea is to uh, move away from repetitive tasks and use your engineering talent to design custom projects that are outside of the bounds of DriveWorks so that you can earn more business, have your uh, engineering staff better utilized, and uh, facilitate the process of getting quotations and drawings out to your customers so they could start making uh, purchase decisions. Uh, as I said, uh, you can go to DriveWorks Live at any time. The site is available 24 seven and uh, uh, there are a mul multitude of different examples that show how you can configure a product and um, generate all kinds of uh, manufacturing data. That particular conveyor example shows how you can not just design discrete parts that have like an almost ending, uh, an almost limitless um, number of designs that can be created, but uh, you, it also shows how you can start doing some layouts within a browser uh, for those uh, for those types of projects. So, so I encourage, highly encourage you to go to the site and uh, start uh, playing with some of the examples, and I'm sure you'll find something close to what you do. So, just a few more slides, and we'll be done. Uh, some of the benefits of looking at this technology is, as I mentioned. Uh, quicker quotations, faster response. Uh, a lot of our customers need a uh, not just a quote, but also a sales drawing that needs to go to the customer. So to be able to do that really quickly is, a, is an advantage. Um, typically, our customers use a two-step process. When that quote turns into an order, that's when they pump out all the drawings because the drawings typically are not needed. Manufacturing drawings are not needed till that point. But with this technology, you're, you're able to create a simplified sales drawing to help in your proposals. Uh, talk about uh, better utilization of resources. Now, if you if you do, you know, 50 quotes a week and um, 45 of those are rejected, there's a lot of time and effort lost that you've put into those uh, situations, but have not been successful. So that is a that is a, a real big time saver if you can automate a lot of the tasks. And uh, as mentioned, um, by deploying your engineering resource to more custom projects and new product development, it's a better use of their time and talent. And uh, we also can talk to um, uh, customers and, and they'll tell us that uh, they've got uh, uh, increased uh, sales success and are now able to reach a wider customer base because they're on the web, either through de dealers or through direct uh, sales uh, situations. Now, um, there are uh, all kinds of configurators uh, on, um, on the internet. And um, one of the key things about our solution is that it enables you to integrate your CAD and your design into your configuration process. So anyone who's on Amazon, can go on and, and spec out a football helmet or a, you know Nike shoes and configure for a different color or different material. And those typically will not require a drawing, but if you're designing a trailer or if you're designing a conveyor and you have to make and if you have to make all the components and all the assemblies and need all the all the drawings, inspection reports, bills of materials, cut lists, flat patterns, that's where our DriveWorks platform really stands above the rest. And um, although there are uh, configurators within CRM solutions or ERP solutions, uh, where we shine and where we can integrate is the fact that you can automate design tasks and uh, not have that as uh, something that slows down your process. Um, we also like to leverage the 3D nature of 
DriveWorks and SaltWorks content so the customer can see what they're getting and uh, thereby reducing the rate of returns. And um, at least with a graphic, you can see what, uh, what you're getting for your selection. Now, if you're designing trailers all day long, the graphics might not be that, that important, but uh, for some customers, like largely in furniture, uh, it's, it's important to be able to see what you're getting because you're gonna have to decide whether that's gonna uh, fit inside uh, your house. And uh, last point, again, uh, utilizing engineering resources for um, projects that require ingenuity and are outside of the scope of what drivers could do. Now, one of the things that we like to talk about is uh, why I work with Javelin. As I showed before, we've got an experienced team. We are world-class. We are, we're, we've done projects for many customers in, in Canada and the US. We've got one customer in the UK and uh, we are talking to some other folks in Europe. And uh, so we are a, a strong team. We've got, uh, we've got experts in SolidWorks, in DriveWorks, uh, all with mechanical backgrounds. So they are a very sturdy and robust group of professionals. We've got a lot of success stories and um, uh, SolidWorks is the leader in 3D design and DriveWorks is the leading platform in design automation. So um, during this uh, presentation, we've had uh, some questions uh, presented to us and now is the time to add more. So we talked about uh, how you've got the capability to do sizing changes couple of questions came across at us with regards to ERP integrations and uh, over off the top of my head uh, I can think of uh, at least seven or eight um, ERP systems that we've connected with whether they be Sightline, SIAC, Epicor, Visual, Microsoft Dynamics, uh, SAP so there's there's um, there's a lot of work that we've done integrating uh, DriveWorks with these systems either pulling data from or pushing data to um, and and that applies to not just ERP, but that also also applies to CRM software. So whether it's Salesforce or or NetSuite or other type of uh, CRM systems, we've got the ability to communicate in uh, in and out. Now, in terms of what industries uh, have we seen drivers? Well, some of the companies that we've been involved with design uh, lifting equipment, uh, site furniture, uh, contract furniture, uh, marine bearings. Uh, silencers, louvers, a lot of architectural products, railings, um, trailers. So there's, there's, uh, you know, if you go to the DriveWorks Live website, there's at least 15 of them, and uh, we've done a, a, we've done a lot of work. We've got six or seven customers that design conveyors, and uh, so there's any type of in industry, as mentioned, where you create same as but slightly different designs. Um, is a great fit for DriveWorks and any type of scenario where you're working closely with, with sales or you're involved in, the, in that transaction, that's typically where DriveWorks is a, is a great fit. So uh, that's all the content that we've had uh, prepared for you. Uh, we've got a few moments. It's, uh, it's not uh, two o'clock yet, but if you have any other questions, hit us up on the chat room if uh, you've got, if you think of something that that uh, after this session that you want to ask, here are our contact details. You can either give us a call or send us an email. Contact us through other channels through Javelin or through through your your sales rep, and and they can get us involved. And uh, so, unless there's no other qu uh, questions, thanks again uh, very much for your time. We appreciate that. Uh, we hope uh, you and yours stay uh, well and are safe and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again. Goodbye.